All right, welcome to another episode of Imagine, Capture, Inspire. And tonight's episode, we're going to talk about photographing the night sky with the tide photographer, Joel Stafford. All right, so tonight's photographer, we're talking to Joel Stafford, the AKA the Tide photographer. And uh, we're out here in, uh, where are we? Lake Moogra? Lake Moogra, or Dam, Mount Moogra Dam. Moogra Dam. Um, it's about nine o'clock at night, it's about seven degrees, a bit chilly. <laughs> the wind's died yeah. off a touch. Yeah, thank God. Yeah. Um, so we just thought we'd do a little intro. And to no today's episode, we're actually going to um, find out a little bit about Joel, who he is, what inspires him and uh, how he manages work and family life. So I hope you enjoy this episode. At the end, we'll hopefully show you some good uh, astro photos and we'll see how it goes. All right, so first things first, um, tell me a little bit about you. We, we've known each other for quite some time. It's a few years now. Yeah, how, how did you start with photography and astro? And... Mate, photography, uh, as you know, being a surfer yourself, uh, it comes a little bit hand in hand being a, a surfer. So I started off surfing. That's how we met back yeah. in the surf photography days. Uh, but I had a passion for photos growing up as a, as a youngin, but just never had the, uh, I guess, the ability to get, to uh, have the money to get the gear. And then got, as I got older, that sort of came to fruition. And then, yeah, and then bit the bullet and bought my first DSLR back in 09. And, it's just I just knew that's what I wanted to do. You've been in love ever since. Yeah, yeah. I uh, I started off as you do with landscapes and and stuff like that. Then fell into a bit of portraiture, but uh, beach sort of lifestyle has been my my goal from the early days. And when did you decide to transition to astro? Um, look, I think back in 2013, 2014, I dabbled. Uh, I I have liked I guess uh, space stuff. Uh, but had never really uh, got into taking photos of it because I, th I guess my early gear, it wasn't really uh, able to take the photos that this new gear now these days can actually get quite easily or reasonably. What are you shooting with? Uh, mate, I'm still shooting with an old 5D Mark III, yep. but also I got I I do have a 5DS, but I and I I've recently because I've now gone full astro, uh, had that modified so it can shoot. Uh, 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 I guess pick up different light waves, so your your infrareds and your your ultraviolets, and picks up all the H alpha gases and stuff. So. Yeah, I think that's important to know, especially for the viewers out there. Especially if you're a beginner photographer, you don't need all the latest gear. You don't need to be um, acquiring all this gear in the top of the top of the range. I mean, five D Mark three was it? Yeah, three. It's still a great old. camera, um, and you're still taking incredible photos. Yeah, uh, look, full frame is going to help you uh, you know regardless of uh, how old your camera is uh, there's techniques of how to get your photos now and get them looking looking a lot better so yeah as i said fighting my three that's a what, 2012 model late 2012 yeah, i'm pretty sure so like it's eight years old yeah. it's, it's old it's still, going, <laughs> still going strong well, it's my second one <laughs> and just to mention you, you spoke about um, a few different techniques for the viewers watching Check out the Tide Photographer. He does touch on a couple of those things when vlogging as well. Um, it's pretty difficult to vlog at night. Uh, it's pitch black. There's no moon. Which so, you're learning. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of effort go, that goes into it. So check out his vlog at the Tide Photographer. Um, there's a couple of questions I was wanting to ask you. Um, and off the top of my head, I can't remember all of them. But I guess uh, you're a family man. I recently had a uh, son who's now 13 months old. How do you balance your, you know, your photography and family life? And what does your wife think about coming out here all hours of the night and returning yeah. in the morning? Mate, uh, mate, balancing life is, well, this is what essentially pushed me into full-time astro was, was family life. Uh, being able, like being based in Brisbane, uh, and shooting surf was nearly not going to, it's near impossible now to get the conditions right for surf photography and having the free time to go down there anymore. So yeah. um, that's why I've gone full astro uh, because of my family. Because um, right now, as we speak, they're asleep. 
Yeah. Um, so I, it gives me the time to go do it. So I don't have to attend to my family. They're all in bed tucked away and I'm out taking photos. So, uh, and then doing Astro, there's a certain time of month where I can do it with no moon and stuff like that. So uh, I don't do it every day or every night, I mean, but um, that's how I sort of uh, can balance it. Um, just it's just a few nights or days a week i'll be extremely tired yeah. but it's you know small price to pay but um but yeah my wife she's uh supportive um most people would well most some wives might be worried thinking that their man's out all the, all night long what's he up to but she knows where i'm at and at least you got video yeah. evidence of that's what exactly doing. right so that's what that's another reason why i vlog is just to prove <laughs> that's what but um uh but yeah, no, she she uh, she does worry because I you know we come out in the middle of nowhere sometimes no phone reception, and uh, yeah, so always keep in contact with her, let her know that I'm here safe yeah. and and when I'm coming home so she knows where I am. So it's almost a two hour drive in pitch black darkness as well. So it's um you know sometimes there's lots of trucks and things as well. So um, kangaroos, kangaroos Number jumping one. out in front. <laughs> so being very safe as well. So um I think you touched on it briefly. I think. Um, having you know such a supportive partner and wives and things like that um, it really does help people like us try to chase what we want to chase and certainly thankful for my wife to um, she's at home with the kid and my son Harry at the moment letting me come out here <laughs> and uh, well you know let me pursue my passion as well so I think that's really important. Well, it's, it's, it's the other half that they don't see. Like, this is tough work and we're crazy for being out here doing it. Yeah. But let's not forget, we've got to have the other halves that are looking, they're yeah. at home, <laughs> letting us do it. So, um, A couple other things, I guess. Uh, I guess, what inspires you? Or is there any people that really you look up to in the astrophotography or um, any other genres of photography? Look, I, I certainly didn't get into astrophotography because of any one person but since being in this genre and uh wanting to learn more like no one's taught me i've never done any workshops on doing it i've just sort of i knew photography i knew how to use a camera i knew basically how to get a shot of a milky way but then now learning more and wanting to know more after doing research you know you stumble across a few photographers and um, I guess the most exciting one at the moment that I personally do follow uh, is a guy called Alan Wallace. He's a Welsh yep. uh, photographer uh, and he's on YouTube. That's he, I, I stumbled across him uh, through uh, online forums and uh, websites where he did a, uh, uh, a video that I, th I think this video sort of launched him and that's what got me onto him yep. where he did a shot of the Milky Way using the a Sony A7S II mm -hmm. with the Sigma 14mm 1.8 yep. handheld. Oh wow. Yeah, so because of the wide angle f nature of the lens and the fast aperture and the low light performance of that camera, he was able to steady his hands and take a single shot of the Milky Way handheld. And he vlogged that and I just thought that was amazing. And, mm -hmm. and then I just followed him from there and then he's been really, he's, I just like his style. Yep. Um, using natural light, not really using artificial light at all. I think he has maybe once or twice, but mm -hmm. if he does like selfies, but yep. um, there's other photographers uh, through social media that I do follow, but I guess uh, he'd be the number one one that I would uh, definitely look up to because I like, he, he does, he does like going out for adventures, yep. um, going to places away from, you know, other people and just getting those different shots that you you know everyone gets a shot of a milky way core but maybe just putting different spins on it you know so it's not yeah. the same and People that's were, that's uh, that's what i look forward to because like in this sort of pocket of uh, australia yeah. and southeast queensland there's only so many dark places you can go out around brisbane and um like as i said we're here in Mugra and it's this place can get overrun on a weekend it's yeah. just ridiculous so i don't like having to come here all the time but if I do, I, I would now, like I, we are now in a midweek because yeah. there's not as many people here. That's right. So. Well, uh, we'll link Alan's uh, YouTube in the bottom as well. I've seen a bit of his work and he certainly, I think something that's really great about this, the YouTube channel and the space there is you really get to see the creative side of people and, you know, the adventure. And I think that's something that I've really enjoyed watching with Joel's channel is he's He's just out there, he's chasing the, the photos that he wants and he's trying to share it with you as well. So you might not want to come out in a six degree cold and wind and all that sort of stuff, but you get to enjoy it, get to see the results and uh, see what really drives him. But we can, that's, that's another reason we're doing it is that we can, I can vlog it, show people what it, 
we're up to and what we're getting, what photos we're getting, and you don't have to do it. <laughs> yeah. So it, may, it might inspire you, and that's that's pretty much it. You know, you, yeah. If anything, you go on YouTube to inspire, not really to become famous or anything. But also, like I think we've spoken, it's like a thing to look back on yeah. as well. Maybe when we get older and think, God, we're stupid when we're younger. <laughs> but anyway. I think, um, yeah, my wife and I, we quick, uh, 2017, we had a honeymoon and I only just got around to putting that footage together and it was really <laughs> rewarding to watch. And I'm so glad that I did record that footage because you get to look back and be like, oh, remember how young I looked back then <laughs> and, you know, how skinny or fit yeah, I, yeah, was. That's right. I was. Look how it's not, not, not tight I yeah. was from after, you know, before having a child. <laughs> <laughs> um, another question, I guess, who, uh, if you had uh, one person dead or alive that you would like to um, have dinner with or have a drink with, who would that be and why? Look, yeah, I'm not, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to, uh, I guess, uh, give away the, the magic of uh, video editing, but you've told me this question already and I've been thinking about it. <laughs> um, oh, look, there's a, probably a million people you'd want to, but the one that came to mind and, and that's probably related to me and Astro, a guy that I'll probably have like a drink with and chat to would be Elon Musk. Yeah. Just because he seems to be the uh, the a guy on a lot of astrophotographers' uh, minds at the moment, with him sending up his uh, space link yeah. satellites, and he's essentially essentially littering the night sky with mil like hundreds of thousands of satellites. satellites so, yeah. for me personally, it hasn't affected me yet um, because of where we're situated in the world, and uh, you only see the satellites at the moment in those early mornings or late evenings or early evenings when the sun will reflect off them. Mm -hmm. um, so the people up in those high northern latitudes who get the, you know, right now they, they don't really get dark. They get the, the sort of like sunlight beaming across. So they'll see them all the time yeah. reflecting. But here, I have heard of people saying they've seen them early morning here, but usually it's, I'm shooting now where it's pitch black, so I don't see them. It doesn't, doesn't affect me, but I'd chat to him about it and just, ask him well just yeah it's why why like i understand why he's doing it because it's going to give internet to the whole world mm -hmm. um, good internet um but did he why did he not think of the consequences of other things and who signed off on the on the piece of paper to say yeah no worries just chuck Go up hundreds it, yeah. of thousands of satellites but that yeah, certainly be an interesting conversation. But he's a smart man too, though. Let's not very forget. Smart, very if, 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 yeah, that's right. You know, he's done Tesla. He's done yeah. other projects as well. Okay. So, yeah, I would definitely chat to him because he's a smart man. He's a bit crazy, but I'm sure all things aside, he's probably still you know not as normal as anyone. Yeah. So uh, I definitely would. Uh, that'd be one guy I would mind having a drink with and chatting with and yeah, yeah picking his brain. I'm pretty sure you could have um, lots of questions. It'd be very interesting. That's for sure. Yeah. So the last question for tonight, with your astrophotography, where to from here? What are your plans for the future and what are you hoping to achieve? Yeah, I, look, I never really thought that I was going to make any money or anything or a uh, future from astrophotography, but um, I guess um, the main th the way I think I could take it is to teach people and do workshops. Um, I did have plans to do workshops this year, but uh, a certain virus sort of yeah. has put that on the back burner. So I just sort of like scrap that. I'll just work a bit longer on producing uh, uh, workshops. But um, I got plans to go down to the Girraween National Park in August. Yeah. I think that's still a goer. Um, and that's going to be a site where I'd like to be able to run a full weekend workshop down there uh, as, a, as a place. But um, between doing workshops and teaching people how to do astro, um uh there's it's it's gaining momentum now is uh dark sky tourism mm -hmm. so maybe working with uh certain like uh local councils and yeah. uh i guess uh groups that you know give uh marketing publicity for certain areas around the state and even the country yeah. uh content and stuff like that so uh I've, i have been approached by uh even local hotel chains that do live in around the scenic room that have wanted to get photos done of the Milky Way around there, uh, I guess where, where they where they're situated to help promote another reason for them to come to the to the local area, yeah. because yeah, dark sky tourism is definitely picking my mantle because people are getting more interested in it, right. and they're starting to understand that you if you live in a in a capital city like like Brisbane, yeah. it's a it's a what's what we call a border class eight sky where 
you, you only see the brightest stars. And then it's not until you get like how we are, like hour and a half, two hours out of the city, mm. you look up and you can actually physically see with your own eyes the, the core of the Milky Way and then people are just blown away by it. So by advertising that, I think is another aspect that local areas are using for tourism and, and people will travel to do that. So people are jumping on board, like Queensland, I think, uh, was, that, was it where, uh, there's a place in the middle of Queensland, it's just the name of it, uh, it's escaped me now, but yeah, they became the seventh dark sky uh, oh, yeah. sanctuary. Yeah. So so the, the, their goal was to be the, within the top 10, yeah. um, but they're the first one, the dark sky sanctuary. There's, there's parks and there's all different classifications, but they were the first in Australia. Yeah. And if when you look on a map of where they are, they're literally in the middle of nowhere. So, yeah. but you have to get certain criteria in place to, to earn that sort of a, uh, I guess, a a position and, and get that sort of a classification so but yeah it's becoming a thing and i think if i can jump on board and help with that sort of tourism with my photos and then also with workshops to certain places i reckon that's a good little thing yeah that's to going forward certainly a um you know good goal to aspire to mm -hmm. and i think you sort of touched on it briefly but my wife and i we did do some um stuff in Lake Tekapo, New Zealand, which I think is mm. actually one of the dark sky yep. locations, beautiful area. And, um, you know, we specifically went to that spot just to see, um, you know, the, the telescopes and mm. all that beautiful surround. So I think it's certainly something that, in, in especially Brisbane, Australia, um, or around this area in Queensland, certainly would benefit a lot from. And uh, having people like you to actually sort of help encourage and show off what you can do mm. and what you can see at night um, is certainly rewarding and I think that's going to really drive you to actually do that. Well it's peaceful, it's now quiet, it's beautiful, it doesn't look so much now with all these lights on but <laughs> but yeah when the lights are off it's uh, yeah it's you know you look up and there's a million kajillion suns beaming down on us from light, millions of light years away so it's amazing and tonight is absolutely beautiful it's um once all the lights get turned off it really does look quite amazing so um i guess i wanted to say thank you for letting me come along with you and help film Pleasure. some stuff for your um, vlog as well so hopefully check out his vlog and um you know this has been another episode of imagine capture inspire if you could like comment and share um, I really appreciate that. Um, it's been a, it's a different type of episode to what I've done in the past. I think this is now episode eight. And uh, yeah, it's been been pretty good. So thanks, Joel. Thanks for having me. And uh, stick around. Hopefully you see some more photos. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs>